So for this problem, we have the infinite square well with a perturbation located at a over 2, which is given by the direct delta function. And what we want to find in part a is the first order correction to the allowed energy levels. So in order to evaluate this expression, we need to evaluate this term over here. And then just to remind ourselves, the nth stationary state for the infinite square well, this is for the unperturbed case, is equal to square root 2 over a sine n pi over a x. And this is applicable for the region x is between 0 and a. So now in order to evaluate this expression, we have the integral from 0 to a. First of all, we have the uh, n stationary state. So we have square root of 2 over a sine n pi over a x. And we take the conjugate, but it doesn't really matter because everything is real anyway. And then we have h prime, the perturbation which is just alpha delta x minus a over 2. And then we also have the uh, nth stationary state again. So square root of 2 over a sine n pi over a x dx. And then let's pull some of the constants out. I can combine these two together. We get 2 over a. And then we also have an alpha. And inside the integral, we're just left with the delta direct delta function. And then we have these two sine terms. So we have sine square n pi over a x dx. And now in order to evaluate this expression, if we evaluate this integral due to the nature of the direct delta function, since it's equal to 0 everywhere else except for a over 2, once you evaluate this integral, all you're left with is the sine square term evaluated at x is equal to a over 2. So the, at x is equal to a over 2, this is the point where the direct delta function becomes infinity. And so that's why if, when you take the integral, that's the only part that survives. So the only thing that survives is the sine, sine squared term evaluated at a over 2. So you can see that in the end, we get 2 alpha divided by a sine squared n pi over 2. And since n is a natural number, if n is even, uh, uh, say for example 2 or 4 or 6, you get sine squared 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and so on, and that's just equal to 0. So if n is even, then this term is equal to 0. So n, n is even. So n is e when n is even, the first order correction is just equal to 0. So there is no first order correction. And the reason is because uh, the wave function, uh, if n is even, when uh, the wave function is actually equal to 0 at a over 2. So it does not feel the effect of the perturbation. And so that's why there will be no need to uh, apply a correction to the energy levels. And when n is odd, when n is odd, let's say when n is equal to 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on, you get this, say for example, 3 pi over 2 term. And for terms, we have an odd number divided by 2 times pi. You just get plus or minus 1 for the sine term. And since you're taking the square, this term just becomes a 1 when n is odd. So we just have 2 alpha divided by a when n is odd. And so this is how you find the first order corrections to the energy levels. Now moving on to part b, we would like to find the first order correction to the wave function. And so that means we would have to use this formula over here. So let me just copy this down. This is the formula we're going to work with for this section. So we have En minus Em and then Xi of M. So this is the formula that we're going to have to use. And in part B in particular, we're interested in the corrections to the ground state. So we're interested in the first order corrections to the ground state. And the ground state is the state where N is equal to one. So we can just substitute N is equal to one for this formula. And we're going to be interested in the first three terms that are uh, that we are going to get once we evaluate this expression. So n is equal to 1. Let's just put that down. And so in order to evaluate this entire expression, let's take this expression apart piece by piece. So let's first focus on the numerator over here. So let's f try to first evaluate this numerator term. And so the numerator term was xi m h prime and then xi 1. So that's what we had in the numerator. And then evaluating this, we just turn this back into an integral. So for xi m, that's just square root of 2 over a sine m pi over a x. And then we have h prime, which is just 
the uh, which is just alpha multiplied by delta x minus a over 2 and then we also have xi 1 so we have square root of 2 over a sine so instead of m we just have 1 so sine pi over a x dx and once again just as before we can pull out the constants so we have 2 over a and then we also have an alpha and in the end we're left with the direct delta function and then sine m pi over a x and sine pi over a x and then once again due to the nature of the direct delta function everything just becomes zero apart from the point where x is equal to a over 2 so in the end the integral is just equal to the sine terms evaluated at a over 2 so sine pi a a over 2 And so we have 2 alpha divided by a sine. So once we have a over 2, this just becomes m pi over 2, and then sine pi over 2. And sine pi over 2 is just equal to 1, so we can actually not write this. So this is what we have for uh, the expression in the numerator. So we were trying to evaluate this expression in the numerator, and then we got this result. It is equal to 2 alpha divided by a times sine n pi over 2. And so we can update this expression for the time being. So now this expression becomes 2 alpha over a sine m pi over 2. And then recall as before, uh, when m is equal to an even uh, natural number, so let's say if m is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8, this term here will just become sine pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and so on, and they will all be equal to 0. And so you can see that m cannot be equal to an even uh, even number because if it's e if it's an even number, then this whole term will just be zero because the sine term is just zero. So you can see that m can only be an odd number, and we can already see that m is not equal to one. M cannot be equal to one, but m can be all the other odd numbers. So that's why m is actually equal to three, five, seven, and so on, and all the other odd numbers. And since in this problem in part b. We're interested in finding the first three terms for this expression. We only need to evaluate uh, the case where m is equal to 3, 5, and 7. And so this is what we have so far. Now next up, let's focus on the energy levels. So uh, this uh, would require us to use the uh, energy level for the unperturbed, uh, unperturbed uh, infinite square well. And as given in chapter 2, the formula for the energy level, for the nth energy level, is given by this expression. So now all we have to do is to substitute this directly into the denominator. And so let's do just that. So in the denominator we have, so in the denominator we have e1 minus e m. And so this is just equal to pi square h bar square divided by 2ma square minus m square pi square h bar square divided by 2 m a square, which is just 1 minus m square pi square h bar square divided by 2 m a square. And so now let's try to substitute this expression into the denominator. So now let's take this away and then let's substitute this expression. So we have 1 minus m square pi square h bar square and then we also have 2ma square in the denominator. So that just goes up back in the numerator. So let's just write this as 2ma square up in the numerator. And so this is what we have for the denominator term. And then we also have this, we also have this uh, xi of m term. So let's just substitute in the actual expression. That's just xi sine m pi over a x. And now all we have to do is to evaluate this term explicitly, do some simplification, and then we will be done. And so, continuing on, uh, we can, let's just copy this expression down neatly, and let's group up some of the, some of the constants. So you see that for all these constants, you have 2ma square, and then you also have a in the denominator, so that cancels out. And then we also have another 2, so that becomes 4ma alpha. So we have 4ma alpha, and then we also have pi square h bar square, 
And then we also have this constant term here, square root of 2 over a. So these are all the constants. Let's just group this up together. And then with all these constants gone, now we also have sine m pi over 2. So that's this term over here, sine m pi over 2. It could be equal to either positive 1 or negative 1, depending on your value of m. And then we also have a 1 minus m squared term in the denominator. And then we have sine m pi over ax. And now we were told that for this problem, we were supposed to evaluate the terms for uh, the first three terms. So we want to evaluate the terms where m is equal to 3, 5, and 7. So now all we have to do is to substitute 3, 5, and 7 for m to obtain our expressions. So let's just copy down these constants first. And then now, first of all, substituting in 3, first we have sine 3 pi over 2. Sine 3 pi over 2, that's just equal to negative 1. And in the denominator, we have 1 minus 3 squared, so 1 minus 9, so negative 8. And so we just have positive 1 over 8. And then we also have sine 3 pi over ax. And so that's the first term. The second term, we substitute in 5. Sine 5 pi over 2, that's equal to positive 1. And then 1 minus 5 squared, so 1 minus 25, that's negative 24. And then we also have sine 5 pi over ax. And then for the last term, 7, we also have uh, sine 7 pi over 2, that's also equal to negative 1. And in the denominator, we have 1 minus 49, so negative 48, which is just positive 1 over 48. And then we have sine 7 pi over ax. And the, the terms, they, they go on and on. So there are infinite number of uh, terms, infinite number of odd numbers. But for this problem, we're only interested in evaluating the first three. So that's why I've written out the first three. And then you can see that we can do some further simplifications. We can, uh, for the denominators, they're all divisible by 8. So we can pull out a 1 over 8 uh, outside of the bracket to make our terms look nicer. So essentially, you can say we're done already. But let's just further simplify this a bit. So we have, let's copy out the constants one more time. 4 ma alpha divided by pi square h bar square square root of 2 over a. And then pulling out the 1 over 8, we have sine 3 pi over ax. And then now we have 1 minus, at uh, minus 1 over 3, sine 5 pi over ax. And then also uh, pulling out 8, we had 6. So we have plus 1 over 6 sine 7 pi over ax. And the terms go on and on, but we're not interested in those. And so let's try to simplify these terms a bit further. So there's a 4, and then this becomes a 2. And then don't forget we have an a over here. So we also have an a over 2. So we have an a over 2, and then we have a square root of 2 over a. And so we can actually simplify this into a square root of a over 2. And so let's just write it as that. So we have a square root of a over 2. So a square root of a over 2. And then let's write this out in a nicer way. The 4 that goes away, that a also goes away. So in the numerator, we're left with m alpha. And so this is what we get eventually. So we have some annoying constants multiplied by the first three terms. And so this is the answer for part b.